Hello everyone, welcome to Deck in Cards. So today we'll be doing a special video where we'll be applying mathematics to analyze one scenario from Jet Lag the Game. Now for those of you who are not familiar, Jet Lag the Game is a travel competition video series that can be found on YouTube and Nebula. I highly recommend watching it because it's actually pretty fun, entertaining, and also quite funny. Now, in the video series, one of the challenges that the contestants have to do is to flip a coin until he or she gets 7 hits in a row. And over here you see the host Adam, who unfortunately had to do this challenge twice across the different uh, seasons. So the first time, he actually flipped 694 times before he decided that he wanted to veto the challenge and just give up. And on the second time, well, he managed to actually complete the challenge, but it took him 428 flips. Now, was this considered lucky enough for him to be able to achieve it in 428 flips? Or is it still really unlucky of him to took so long? Well, let's try and figure out what is the expected number of flips needed to achieve 7 hits in a row. Okay, to analyze this problem, actually, we are going to use a relatively intuitive and common sense uh, theorem, which is called the law of total expectation. Now, expectation basically just means average in simple terms. And how does this theorem work? I'm going to first go through an example to help motivate it. So in this example, let's say there are only two factories in the whole world that make light bulbs, factory A and factory B. Now the light bulb made by factory A on average lasts 5,000 hours and the light bulb made by factory B on average lasts 4,000 hours. And suppose that the market share is that factory A takes 60% of the market and factory B takes 40% of the market. Now, what is then if I randomly grab a light bulb in the market, what is then the expected number of hours that the light bulb will last? Well, it seems quite commonsensical that because uh, factory A takes 60% of the market and the average is 5,000 hours. You have 5,000 times 0 0.6 and then you plus 4,000 times 0 0.4 and then this gives you 4,600. Basically, it's sort of like a weighted average of the two averages. So hopefully that is uh, pretty believable and in general, the law of total expectation says the following. So let's say this is your space of possible outcomes. In this case, outcome is whether light bulb is factory A or factory B. Uh, in general, you have outcomes uh, A1, A2, and so on. And let's say that you know, when you are given that you are inside the outcome AI, uh, your average is this quantity. So this quantity here represents the expectation given that you are inside this outcome. Then what you do is you weight all these averages by the probability of being in the outcome, and then you add it up. That gives you the overall expectation of the variable you are interested in. So uh, in this case, hopefully this example helps illuminate this formula. Basically, probabilities are 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. And then the averages when you are in that particular outcome is 5,000 and 4,000 respectively. So we can now apply this concept to figure out the expected number of flips needed to get seven hits in a row. And how do we do this? Well, we'll need to actually divide our space of outcomes uh, into sets that we know how to calculate the averages of. Okay, so let's begin by setting x to be our variable of interest. It will be the number of flips to get 7 hits in a row. And we want to find the expected value of x. So one natural way to divide out the space of outcome is what happens on the first flip. The first flip can be tail or hits. Now, thankfully, if the first flip is tail, you can actually calculate well, the probability of that happening is half. And more importantly, you can also calculate what is the average number of flips needed uh, under that scenario. And the trick is you basically use back the definition of EX. So let me explain why this is the expected number of flips needed under this scenario. When you are in this scenario, you already wasted one flip. And because you got tail, you are basically uh, starting again from ground zero. So when you start from ground zero, you know that EX by definition is the average number of flips needed. So this is a bit of a brain teaser here. Yeah. So the average number of flips needed under this scenario is one for the flip very wasted plus the average 
in the normal scenario. Yeah, so hopefully this makes sense to you. But in the other scenario of getting H, you know that the probability of getting that is half, but you cannot very easily figure out what is the quantity here because you only have EX, which is the number of flips needed to get seven hits, but you need six more hits and you are not starting from ground zero here and so on. So it's a bit confusing, but what you can do is further break this up into two more scenarios. So after H, you can get tails or you can get hits. So HT and HH. HT happens with probability one quarter. And this time you have wasted two flips and then you end up back at ground zero. So you plus EX, which is the number of flips needed when you are at ground zero. Okay. And same thing, HH, you cannot really figure out what to write over here, but you can then break it down again to HHT and HHH and so on until you get six heads and one tail, which you know is you have wasted seven flips and then plus EX for the average starting from ground zero. Now you might think, okay, I have to continue this forever, but no, because the, uh, the next scenario that's remaining is seven hedges in a row now. And by definition that accomplishes the mission already. And for this scenario, you have spent seven flips. So the average is of course just seven. And the probability of that happening is one over one to eight, basically half times half times half seven times. So with this, you can now plug all this back into the formula. So again, it's quite intuitive what the formula says. EX is given by half here, the probability times this expected value, which I write here, one quarter times the other expected value over here and so on. And notice because of the trick we use where this is repeated again in terms of EX. Now my equation is just in terms of one variable, one unknown, which is uh, EX. So by isolating an EX and solving it, EX is 254. So if you look at the expected number of flips needed, and then you look at these numbers over here, or you can say this, this is pretty tragic. Yeah, but maybe things are even more tragic because let's think about the standard deviation, you know, because maybe uh, the standard deviation is very small. And then it means, well, actually Adam is like, in some very, 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 very slim, uh, unlucky scenario. So it will be interesting to find out what the standard deviation is. Now, thankfully, you can actually apply a very similar logic to calculate the standard deviation. So firstly, the standard deviation is given by this formula over here. So uh, expectation of x squared this time minus the expectation x quantity squared. So what we need to do, we already have EX, which is 254. We need to calculate E of X squared. So basically the number of flips squared, what is that average? So same thing, what we can do is have all this as the breakdown of my scenario space into distinct non-overlapping areas. And these are the probabilities of the different scenarios. Now I need to see if I can calculate what is the expected number of coin flips squared if I am inside that particular scenario. So let's start with tails. Now, the thing is when you have tails, the number of flips that's going to happen behaves as one plus X. You wasted one flip and then you're going to flip as though you are back at ground zero. So one plus X represents the behavior of the number of coin flips under this scenario. So uh, basically the expected flip squared will just be this thing squared. And then you take the expectation. Okay. But you might be wondering, how do I even calculate this? This is not in terms of EX squared. So even if I eventually plug it into the equation, I'm not going to get an equation of EX squared. Well, actually it is because you can expand this by expanding a square and then you get this expression here. You already know EX, so this is now a number 254. So you have number plus EX square. So very good. Eventually when you plug all these quantities in, you will get only EX square as the unknown. So I'm going to similarly have all this expression here. And last one is just seven squared. 
and I plug it into the formula and solve for ex squared, which is this number, and putting it back into the formula for standard deviation, I have 248. So in summary, the expected number of flips 254, standard deviation 248.38. So if you just look at this second scenario that Adam is in, I guess he is slightly uh, like maybe 0 0.9 standard deviation away from the mean and well I guess if you actually count his first success as having count, come only after 1100 flips then he is actually over 3 standard deviations away from the mean which is quite insanely unlucky yeah so well uh, try harder Adam yeah so that is all for today's video I hope you had some fun uh, seeing math apply in a recreational setting. Uh, do stay tuned to the channel for more fun math videos. Thanks for watching and see you soon.